we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to make this a better leading group. Why is that? Because it's in acidic conditions. Uh, how, why, why do you say that? And if it leaves, it's gonna have a negative charge. Right. Now let's talk that a little bit. Um, are you saying acidic conditions because of this? Yeah. But this is step two, which hasn't okay. happened okay. yet. Okay. So, in uh, fact, this is basic conditions because if we'd already added the acid, it would have destroyed the lithium aluminum hydride. All right. That's why the acid has to come in step two. So anytime we're using a hydride reagent, we're under basic conditions um, because uh, otherwise that's the whole reason why we have a whole separate step here. So we don't need to protonate this before it can leave. And uh, do a second attack with uh, uh, nucleophilic hydrogen. Let's see, uh, are you going to do that right now? What should we do with this particular picture here? What should happen in that picture? Take off the leading group. And That's right. Form the carbon That's right, good. So this is just a very typical attack on the carboxylic acid derivative. So let's show that happening. Good. Functional group did we start with here? Uh, uh, we started with uh, ester. Yeah, and here we have a lithium aluminum hydride. Well, even though we never talked about this before, it shouldn't be surprising that the nucleophilic hydrogens here would attack this carbon because we know that this is a good source of nucleophilic attack, uh, and we know that we would like to reform the carbonyl. Anytime we attack a carboxylic acid derivative, we expect to reform the carbonyl, and that's exactly what you did. And it turned out we didn't need to protonate this ahead of time because we are under basic conditions. The acid hasn't come in yet. And then, like I said, that was a very good insight that we're not done here yet because this is an aldehyde and we were just reviewing, that's why we started with this. These hydrides also attack aldehydes and ketones. So now we have to kind of do this reaction down here. Let's go through the steps for that mechanism. Let's actually show that mechanism. since we have no more um, good leading groups connected to the carbonyl carbon, then we, it's not going to try to reform the can. Right. So it's going to get protonated. That's very good. That's right. All we have now are carbons and hydrogens, um, so we cannot reform the carbonyl. That's right. So now, finally, we're at a dead end, and now is finally when we would do the second step and add the acid. Right. So lots of things have to happen before we actually add the acid here. It's a matter of taste whether you actually keep drawing these hydrogens because they would be hidden hydrogens. I suppose this would correct me as well, but people don't really care about this. So we don't really care about this leaving group that left over here. All right. So if I, if I see something that has an alkane group uh, that's, an alkane, that's an alcohol, um, then as if it's a retrosynthesis, then I should assume that it attacks either an aldehyde or um, 
I guess I could be having a, I could be having um, a, a category one ketone or aldehyde attack, or I could be having a carboxylic attack with a lithium alumina hydride. Right. You're saying you're saying that if, if the product is an alcohol, it's, what did it come from? Yeah. yeah. The product is an alcohol. It could have come from a hydride attack on an aldehyde or a ketone or a carboxylic acid or a carboxy or an ester. Um, it could have just come from. There's also it could have come from other things. It could have come from an SN1 or an SN2, sure. or even from an addition to an alkene. There's lots of ways to make alcohols. Giving, but these are good ways. Right. That's right. That's the kind of the, these are the ways of making alcohols that we've been focusing on here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So sorry, that kind of threw me a little bit. Right. Of the mm -hmm. Some of the homework problems. Right. So this is for getting something so basic. Yeah. It's forming an alcohol. Yep. Okay. Um, by the way, none of these reactions would work with sodium borohydride. Okay. Um, so this works with sodium borohydride, um, but this wouldn't get off the ground. Sodium borohydride doesn't attack an ester. So, so no, none of the uh, carboxylic derivatives are going to work with the sodium borohydride? Not, not that I know of, no. No. All right, so we've seen what happens with li when lithium aluminum hydride attacks an aldehyde or a ketone. We've seen what happens when it attacks a carboxylic acid, although we didn't go through that mechanism. And we've seen what happens when it attacks an ester. Ultimately, even though the mechanisms are different, when it attacks an ester, you get the same exact thing as when it attacks a carboxylic acid. Um, so we should also see how you could do this without the whole mechanism. All we're doing is we're turning the um, carbonyl carbon into an alcohol carbon and putting in any hydrogens that we need. So these oxygens just, uh, well, yeah, you're turning it into an alcohol and putting in any hidden hydrogens that you need. Where did th these two hydrogens come from? The lithium aluminum hydrogen. And where did this one come from? The uh, hydronium. Yeah, we would need nucleophilic hydrogens to attack the electrophilic carbon. So these came from the hydride, but it would take a um, electrophilic hydrogen to attack the nucleophilic oxygen. So this came from the acid in this case. Um, so I just wanted to point out how you could think of this through without doing the whole mechanism. You could do it without doing the whole mechanism. It would still help, I think, to asterisk the carbonyl carbon. And here we asterisk the former carbonyl carbon, and we just make that former carbonyl carbon into an alcohol. Okay, well, that's as much time as we have. Um, but I wanted to put these three on one piece of paper, because oftentimes people get confused about lithium aluminum hydride attacking different reagents. Yeah. So here we have a comparison uh, of how they're similar awesome. and different. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.